Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 61 to 70 for the Certified Ethical Hacker V13 exam. Let's begin. Susan, a software developer, wants her web API to update other applications with the latest information. For this purpose, she uses a user-defined HTTP callback or push APIs that are raised based on trigger events. When evoked, this feature supplies data to other applications so that users can instantly receive real-time information. Which of the following techniques is employed by Susan? The correct answer is B. Webhooks Webhooks are user-defined HTTP callbacks triggered by specific events. When the event comes, the webhook sends real-time data to another application via a HTTP POST request enabling instant updates without the need for polling. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Web shells. These are malicious scripts used by attackers to gain remote control over a web server, not related to real-time updates or APIs. C. REST API. REST APIs are a style of building web services, but they require explicit requests to retrieve data, unlike webhooks, which push data automatically. D. SOAP API. SOAP is a protocol-based API that also relies on request or response, not event-driven, real-time push like webhooks. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which iOS jailbreaking technique patches the kernel during the device boot so that it becomes jailbroken after each successive reboot? The correct answer is D. Untethered jailbreaking. Untethered jailbreaking modifies the iOS kernel during the boot process, so the device remains jailbroken even after a reboot, without needing to connect a computer or run a jailbreak app again. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Tethered jailbreaking. This requires the device to be connected to a computer every time it reboots to reapply the jailbreak. B. Semi-untethered jailbreaking. This allows the device to reboot without a computer but the jailbreak must be reapplied manually using an app on the device. C. Semi-tethered jailbreaking. This allows rebooting without a computer, but the device will boot into a non-jailbroken state unless re-jailbroken using a computer. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Stella, a professional hacker, performs an attack on web services by exploiting a vulnerability that provides additional routing information in the SOAP header to support asynchronous communication. This further allows the transmission of web service requests and response messages using different TCP connections. Which of the following attack techniques is used by Stella to compromise the web services? The correct answer is B. WS address spoofing. WS address spoofing exploits the WS addressing standard used in SOAP headers. This allows attackers to manipulate routing information in the message headers to redirect or intercept messages, potentially using different TCP connections for request and response, which fits Stella's method. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Web services parsing attacks. This target how XML or SOAP data is parsed, often causing crashes or logic errors, not routing manipulation. C. SOAP action spoofing. This involves modifying the SOAP action header to deceive the web service into executing unintended operations, not rerouting messages. D. XML injection. This injects malicious XML content into a message to exploit parsing logic, but it doesn't involve altering routing info in the SOAP header. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Attacker Steve targeted an organization's network with the aim of redirecting the company's web traffic to another malicious website. To achieve this goal, Steve performed DNS cache poisoning by exploiting the vulnerabilities in the DNS server software and modified the original IP address of the target website to that of a fake website. What is the technique employed by Steve to gather information for identity theft? The correct answer is A. Farming Farming is an attack where a legitimate website's traffic is redirected to a malicious site by poisoning the DNS cache or modifying DNS entries. Steve's use of DNS cache poisoning to send users to a fake website aligns perfectly with farming, 
often used for identity theft and credential harvesting. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Skimming. This involves stealing credit card information, usually via physical devices like card readers, not DNS manipulation. C. Pretexting. This is a social engineering technique where the attacker creates a fabricated scenario to steal personal information, not technical redirection. D. War driving. This involves driving around to find unsecured Wi-Fi networks, unrelated to DNS poisoning or redirecting web traffic. Therefore, the correct answer is A. What is the port to block first in case you are suspicious that an IoT device has been compromised? The correct answer is B. 48101. Port 48101 is commonly used by many IoT devices for remote access and communication with external servers. If an IoT device is suspected of being compromised, this is a non-standard, high-numbered port that should be blocked first to prevent it from communicating with malicious C2 servers. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 22. This is used for SSH. While potentially risky if exposed, is usually used for administrative purposes and is not specific to IoT malware. C. 80. This is used for HTTP traffic. Blocking it will disrupt normal web functionality, not just IoT-specific threats. D. 443. This is used for HTTPS traffic. Blocking it could cut off all secure web traffic, not just malicious IoT communication. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Clark is a professional hacker. He created and configured multiple domains pointing to the same host to switch quickly between the domains and avoid detection. Identify the behavior of the adversary in the above scenario. The correct answer is A. Unspecified proxy activities. Clark's tactic of using multiple domains pointing to the same host to quickly switch between them and evade detection falls under unspecified proxy activities. This refers to adversaries using unusual or evasive proxy setups that don't match traditional or known techniques, allowing them to maintain access or communication with compromised systems without being easily tracked. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Use of command line interface. This involves interacting with a system via a command line, not related to domain switching or proxy evasion. C. Data staging. This refers to preparing and organizing data for exfiltration, not for hiding or switching domains. D. Use of DNS tunneling. This involves encapsulating data inside DNS queries or responses for covert communication, not simply switching domains pointing to the same host. Therefore, the correct answer is A. What firewall evasion scanning technique make use of a zombie system that has low network activity as well as its fragment identification numbers? The correct answer is D. Idle scanning. Idle scanning is a firewall evasion technique that uses a third-party zombie host with low network activity and predictable IP ID numbers. The attacker sends spoofed packets as if from the zombie to infer port states on the target without revealing their own IP address, making it highly stealthy. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Packet Fragmentation Scanning This breaks scan packets into smaller fragments to bypass firewalls or IDS, but doesn't involve zombie or IP ID analysis. B. Spoof Source Address Scanning This involves faking the source IP to hide the attacker's identity, but not using a third-party idle host to gather responses. C. Decoy Scanning This sends multiple scan requests from various spoofed IPs to obscure the real attacker, but does not use IP ID behavior or a zombie system. Therefore, the correct answer is D. By performing a penetration test, you gained access under a user account. During the test, you established a connection with your own machine via the SMB service and occasionally entered your login and password in plain text. Which file do you have to clean to clear the password? The correct answer is D. Bash history. The bash history file stores the command history of the bash shell including any commands entered by the user, such as those containing plain text usernames and passwords. 
to prevent recovery of sensitive information, this file should be cleared or sanitized. Why the other options are incorrect? A. X session log. This is used for logging X session activity, not command line history. B. Profile. This is a shell startup script used to set environment variables, not to store command history. C. Bash RC. This is also a shell startup script used to configure the shell environment, not related to storing command inputs. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Jack, a disgruntled ex-employee of Incalso LTD, decided to inject Fowler's malware into Incalso systems. To deliver the malware, he used the current employee's email IDs to send fraudulent emails embedded with malicious links that seem to be legitimate. When a victim employee clicks on the link, they are directed to a fraudulent website that automatically loads Flash and triggers the exploit. What is the technique used by Jack to launch the Fowler's malware on the target systems? The correct answer is A. In-memory exploits Jack used an in-memory exploit, a common method for delivering Fowler's malware. These attacks do not write malicious files to disk. Instead, they run directly in memory, often exploiting vulnerabilities to execute code that remains undetected by traditional antivirus solutions. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Legitimate applications. This refers to using trusted programs to run malicious code, but the question specifically describes an exploit triggered by a malicious site. C. Script-based injection. This would involve injecting malicious scripts into applications or web pages, which is not the core mechanism in this scenario. D. Phishing. Phishing is used as the delivery vector, but the technique for executing Fowler's malware here is in-memory exploitation, making A the most accurate answer. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Wilson, a professional hacker, targets an organization for financial benefit and plans to compromise its systems by sending malicious emails. For this purpose, he uses a tool to track the emails of the target and extracts information such as sender identities, mail servers, sender IP addresses, and sender locations from different public sources. He also checks if an email address was leaked using the haveibeenpwned.com API. Which of the following tools is used by Wilson in the above scenario? The correct answer is D. Infoga. Infoga is an email reconnaissance tool used to gather information about email addresses. It can extract details such as sender identities, mail servers, IP addresses, and locations from public sources. It also supports integration with services like haveibeenpwned.com to check if an email has been compromised. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Factiva. This is a business information and news aggregation tool, not designed for email reconnaissance. B. Zoom Info. This is a commercial database for sales and marketing leads not for extracting email metadata or tracking breaches. C. Netcraft. This is used for website profiling, hosting information, and phishing detection, not for email address reconnaissance. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.